So the best way to understand your data, the first thing that you need to know, do is to plot your data to figure out whether there is a trend or seasonality or any other pattern in your data. That's going to help you to first understand your data and also use and apply the right method for, for forecasting. So plot your data and after you plot the data, if you figure it out that you have, for example, trend in your data, then you should not, for example, use the exponential smoothing method because that's not appropriate for trend. You have to use the adjusted exponential smoothing. Another method that is uh, suitable for trend data when you have trend in your data is called linear trend. The linear, linear trend, as the name suggests, it's a, um, it's a line. It's actually basically a, um, a line that you learn in algebra. So the formula for line that you have learned might be a little bit different, but the concept is the same that you can see from this formula right here. In this formula, this is actually the formula for a line. F of t is the forecast for period t. And the line has two components. It has uh, the slope and the and intercept, intercept, the slope and the intercept. The intercept is just the value of your forecast for current period when t is zero right now. And b is the slope of the line. And t is the specified number of time periods that you have in your data. It can be negative, like means the previous periods, it can be positive for the futures. So here is a demonstration of a linear trend line. Uh, in this plot on the x-axis or the horizontal axis, we have the time period t starting from zero going to the infinity. And on the y-axis, we have the forecast value. Using the linear trend formula, which is the formula of a line, when t is zero, that means for period t, period zero right now, so t is zero, then the value of your forecast is a, that's the intercept. And for greater values of t, when t increases, the value for your forecast is going to be computed using the linear trend formula with the impact of the slope. So the slope is the ratio of changes in your forecast, y value, based on the changes in your time period, time horizon. So basically all you need to know and understand about uh, a linear trend formula is the two component, the intercept A and the slope B. So let's estimate these uh, two components. If you can estimate these two components, then you can actually write down or develop your uh, linear trend forecasting formula. So how do, we, how do we do that? So let's estimate this as slope and intercept. The slope and intercept can be estimated from the historical data, from your past data. A is the formula for A and B are shown here. So you, what you do is first you find B, the slope, and after you find B, then um, the intercept, you can find it from this formula or this formula. So that, that's basically the average of your forecast minus B, the slope that you computed, multiplied by the average of the time period. But like any other instances um, in these types of examples today's in today's rules we're not going to do this of course by hand we're going to use softwares to compute these and estimate these components um, in our case we're going to use excel to estimate the slope and intercept of the linear trend so let's see how that would work here is an example for linear trend there is a cell phone company that we have the sales data here as you can see for the 10th period period one to period 10 and first of all you need to know that there is a trend here so if you actually plot this data you're going to see that on average the sales number is going to grow 
by the time horizon, by the time. So that's a, a uprising trend in the data. What we want to do is we want to use the linear trend formula forecasting to make a forecast for period um, 11 and 12. That's week 12 and 11. So let's do this in Excel. So over here, we want to do an example in Excel. We have the data for the sales for week one through week 10, as you can see here. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and see whether we have a trend or not. So just, I'm just going to grab all these data, um, the time periods, the first column and the second column actual sales. Then I'm going to go to the insert tab in the charts part. I'm going to pick this one and this is going to create a, a scatter chart as you can see here. On the x-axis, this is a time period and on the y-axis is the actual sales value. As you can see from these data points here, the average looks to be increasing from the as time increases. So this shows that there is an uprising trend in our data and a linear trend formula would be for forecasting would be appropriate. So let's go ahead and start building our um, linear trend model. A linear trend model is just a formula for a straight line in which the x variable um, is actually time period. So it has two components. The first component is the slope component B and the intercept component A. So to simplify this equation, I have divided this to uh, the first part is the numerator equation as you see here. I have it here to make it simple to um, quantify and the denominator also I have put it here. So let's go ahead and compute this um, slope. The first part, the numerator part, that's equal to n multiplied by, n is the, num the number of time periods, uh, the summation of t by y. t is the time period multiplied by y, which is the um, actual sale value. So we have t here, we have y here. I have created two columns here. The one column is for t y, t multiplied by y. So that's equal to t for time period one, that's one multiplied by the actual sales, which is 700 here. So the multiplication is 700. And you can do it for the other periods out there. So for the second period, it's just going to be two multiplied by the actual sales, which is 724, and that's it. And for simplification, that's actually the beauty of Excel. You can just drag this and use the automa automation part of Excel, Power Excel to uh, calculate all of this. So now I have this part and we can go ahead and compute this first part. So that's equal to n, n is 10, 10 multiplied by the summation of ty, which we computed over here. It's going to be sum, and we're gonna select all these column right here. It's then minus summation of t, summation of y. So that's sum of t, all the t's here, I'm gonna select all of them. Um, do not select 11 and 12 because those are the time period that we want to make a forecast for. We don't have the data for. Okay. Multiply by sum of y values. So I'm going to grab for the sum of y's here. Hit enter and that there is it. So we have that part. For the second part or the denominator part of this slope equation, we have n multiplied by the summation of t squared minus the a square of the summation of t. So we need to create actually an, um, a column to compute the t square value. That's what I have done here, t square. So this is just going to be the square of t here. So one is one square, then two square. And you can again use the automation capability of Excel and this is going to compute t square values here. So let's go ahead and compute this second part as well. The equation says n multiplied by the square of the summation of a square t. So that's 10 multiplied by sum of these columns. I'm going to grab all the values here minus the other part. The other part is the a squared of summation of t. So I'm going to create the squared first. That's in parentheses, a squared. And in the parentheses, I'm going to insert the summation of t. So that's the sum of t here. All right, now I'm gonna hit enter and that's it. I have the two parts. We have the numerator computed, we have the denominator computed, and there we go. So b for the slope is 
the numerator divided by the denominator. Um, the slope is 7.5. Now that we have the slope, we can use this equation to find the intercept as well. So the intercept is going to be um, the average of y minus b multiplied by the average of t. So a here is, I'm going to use the average equation from Excel. Um, so the average average of y's, y's is the second column, I'm going to grab all the data here, minus um, b multiplied by the average of t. So b is here, I'm going to grab b, multiply by the average, I'm going to use the average, average of t. So that's the first column right here, I'm going to grab all of these data, and then I'm going to hit enter. So A, the intercept for our linear trend equation is 699.4. Now that we have A and B, we can just use it this in this linear trend equation, as you can see it here. And that's going to give us the formula that we can use to make a prediction for week 11 and week 12. Another way actually to easier way to use to uh, use Excel, um, a faster, more efficient way to use Excel to compute the linear trend formula is to use uh, its functionality. It has a predefined made function that you can use. Um, so for the slope actually is a slope. The function is a slope. The slope, it has two parameters. The set of the first set of parameters is the the y variable that you want to make forecast for here is going to be our actual sales so i'm going to grab all these data here right here comma and the second set of parameters is the x variables or the as you can see here we have the time periods here one to ten so i'm going to grab all of that and if you hit enter it's computed there you go 7.5 as we computed right here it is much more efficient and less painful and intercept we can use the equation to intercept, intercept, and again the same. It has two parameters. The first parameter is the set of actual cells, comma, the set of time periods, 1 to 10. Parenthesis closed, hit enter, and that there you go, 699.4. So this is the second way to um, find a slope and an intercept of the linear trend equation. The third way actually is also interesting to see. So we do what we did before, I'm going to, um, for plotting the data, I'm going to um, grab all the data for the first column and the second column, the time periods and the actual series, and I'm going to go to the insert tab, the chart part, and I'm going to grab the scatter, build a scatter chart, okay? So this is what we did before. If you look here, there's a plus sign here. If you click on it, it has some options here. So go check this trend line. So this is your trend line. This is actually what we want to build. We want to build this, um, the equation for this line, which you can see it already here. But to find the equation, you can actually ask it to find the equation. So you go here, here, more options here, more options, and it's gonna give you this option, um, display equation on chart. And I'm gonna click on this. So as you can see here right now, this is the equation for the linear trend. Why? That's the actual sales is equal to 7.509 multiplied by x, which is here is time period, plus 699.4. So this is another method to find the linear trend formula. I'm going to get rid of this, get it out of our way. Now that we have built this formula, this is the linear trend formula, we can use it to make a forecast for the actual sales prediction for week 11 and week 12. So let's go ahead and in the forecast column right here, for week 11, we're gonna build the forecast for week 11. So that's going to be using the formula. So the formula is here, let me make this more visible to you. All right, so the linear trend equation is the forecast for period next period of t plus one that's 699.4 which is the intercept plus 7.509 which is this a slope multiplied by time period so this is just going to be 600 or i'm going to just grab this value right here the intercept plus the slope multiplied by the time period that's 11. So our forecast for the sales in week 11 is 782. 
we can do the same for v to make a prediction for v12 as well so that's equal to the intercept plus the slope multiplied by the time period which is 12. then there we go we have 789.5 that's our prediction and forecast for the amount of sales actual sales in week 12.